You know something? We say that we have an issue why Shia criticize Aisha radiallahu anha and, and, and that's, I feel, rightly so. Like, you know, she was the wife of the Prophet and to criticize her is in a way, I feel, to criticize the Prophet because at the end of the day, she was his wife and beloved to him. Um, and the Sunnis have an issue with the Shia about this, that, you know, the Shia go on, they're disrespectful to Aisha radiallahu anha and stuff like that. But look here, look here in... Kitabu Fard al Khumus, Hadith 3104. An Abdullah radiallahu an, that the messenger stood up one day and he gave a khutbah and he gave a speech. Fa ashara nahwa maskani Aisha. And he pointed towards the house of Aisha and he said, Ha hunal fitna. This is where the fitna will be. And he said it three times. Ha hunal fitna, ha hunal fitna. This is where the fitna will be. Min haythu yatla qarnu shaytan. Where the devil will bring forth its head. Wow. That's to the house of Aisha. What the hell is wrong with these people? What? This is so disrespectful to our Prophet, to Aisha radiallahu anha, who's so beloved, um, and to Muslims generally speaking. Uh, they, we seriously need to be questioning what on earth we're trying to push. People transmitting this nonsense, this hatred against our Prophet, this disrespect saying that the Prophet Solomon and this, oh, I will have sex like this and then being cursed by God, like as a punished with a handicapped child, uh, saying the Prophet fell naked, saying that our Prophet married a little girl, saying that our Prophet forgot the Qur'an and was reminded by somebody, saying our Prophet was sitting there and the revelation came down wrong. He forgot to mention the, the disabled people and then he got updated, uh, saying things like, oh, all of these things, Umar ibn al-Khattab saying there was extra verses in the Qur'an that used to be there. Um, all of these kind of things, people, all of these kind of things. Especially things like this. Look, just think about it. The Prophet saying, I forgot the Qur'an. Oh, oh, I forgot. I, I, oh, I'd forgotten that. Oh, yeah, that was the Qur'an, wasn't it? Oh, that, I'd forgotten that verse. This is how they repay our Prophet. This is how these Wahhabis, honestly, these filthy <laughs> pro haters of our Prophet, honestly, this is how they repay our Prophet. And these Wahhabi sympathizers today that are like semi Wahhabis as well. This is how they want to repay the Prophet with this kind of nonsense and his companions. They want to repay Umar like that. They want to repay Aisha like that. That Aisha, oh, you know, uh, the, her house is where the devil is and stuff like this. And this is what, this is the nonsense. Abbas says to the Prophet, why don't you take off your Izar? Put it on your shoulders. And you can carry the stones like that. So he does that. The, it says, فَحَلَّهُ So the Prophet opens his izar. And he puts it on his shoulders. And then, فَسَقَطَ مَغْشِيًا He falls unconscious. فَمَا رُؤِيَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ عُرْيَانًا After that day, he was never seen naked again. This is Hadith 364. Wow. That is, this is how we are repaying the, our prophets with respect. That is nonsense. And then, do you know, the, the scholars will do gym, acrobatic kind of gymnastics to, oh, no, he never, you know, he never got naked. Like it was just a bit of his thigh they saw or a bit of, it says he was never seen naked after that day. The chapter heading is, Discouragement of being naked. Right, so. And he revealed with him the book. فَكَانَ مِمَّا أُنزِلَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ And from that which Allah revealed, ayat rajam was the verse of stoning people to death. Now there is no verse of stoning people to death in the Quran. فَقَرَأْنَاهَا and we used to read it. وَأَقَلْنَاهَا And we used to understand it. وَوَعَيْنَاهَا And we used to comprehend it. فَلِذَا رَجَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَرَجَمْنَا بَعْدَهُ And that's why 
the messenger of Allah stoned, and we stoned after him. So according to this, Sayyidina Umar, attributing it to Umar, look, disrespecting Umar, attributing to Umar that he is saying that, oh, there used to be this verse in the Quran, and we used to read it, we used to know it. In another hadith, Umar says, if it wasn't for people going to say this and this about me, I would show them that where this used to be read in the Quran. Right, so this is disrespectful to, to Umar, it's disrespectful to the Quran. It's trying to say that Umar is saying the Quran ch has changed. This one, the Prophet on his final deathbed. This is in Kitab al-Maghazi, the book of to do with warfare and stuff like that, battles. And it's hadith number 4431. That the Prophet, this uh, Ibn Abbas, uh, says that Yom al Khamis on, uh, on Thursday or uh, on this day, I mean, there's some difference. I mean, generally they're going with Yom al Khamis as the day is called Yom al Khamis. Right? Now, on this day, the Prophet وسلم, became very ill. The pain, it, like the pain, he was feeling a lot of pain. Um, so he said, فَقَالَ أُوتُونِي أَكْتُبْ لَكُمْ كِتَابًا لَنْ تَضِلُّ بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا Bring me a piece of paper, let me write uh, something for you so you can never be misguided. So, فَتَنَازَعُوا وَلَا يَنْبَغِي عِنْدَ نَبِيٍ تَنَازَعٌ So they started to uh, like argue amongst themselves and uh, you know, they start to have like a, a dispute amongst themselves and it doesn't, it's not befitting to have this dispute uh, with amongst, uh, in the presence of a prophet. فَقَالُوا They said, this is, the, look how it's portraying the companions of the prophet of God. فَقَالُوا مَا شَأْنُهُ what, what, they said, what's, it, what's, what's, what's up with him? What's up with the prophet? A hajara istafhimuhu That a hajara means, is he speaking deliriously? Like, is he speaking nonsense? Like, what's he chatting about? Like, a hajara is to speak deliriously. Like, you, you, like, like you, you're not making any sense. Uh, this is what, this is what they're apparently saying about the prophet, the companions. I mean, look at the nonsense. Attributing that, this, this is not true. Like, this kind of stuff, that it, the way it's attributed, we are doing a dis. The Shia always use this hadith to attack uh, the companions, and we don't do any justice to ourselves because we're allowing it. We're allowing it. So look at this one. I mentioned this one before, right? That uh, right about seeking a child, the Prophet Solomon, hadith in Kitab al Jihad two eight one nine, that Solomon alayhi salam, the Prophet. Son of Dawood said, tonight I will have sex with a hundred women. Or in one narration, 99 women. Right. Uh, and he said, they will all give me a baby. They will all give me a child who will become a warrior. And there's a few hadith with the same thing. Now, uh, he said, they will all give me... Uh, and somebody, his, his friend said to him, say, inshallah. Falam yaqul inshallah. He never said it. So none of them got pregnant except one, and she had a handicapped child. And the Prophet said, if he had said, inshallah, he would have been given, like, healthy warrior children from all of them. Now, first of all, just look at the absurdity in that hadith. The absurdity in that hadith. Let alone the fact that, okay, I'm going to have sex tonight with 100 women. Or 90 women. In this one, 99 or 100. In the other narration, 90. I mean, let alone the fact that even if you try to calculate that in terms of timings, <laughs> you try to say, okay, let's just put a time to that. <laughs> like, how long does this take? Right? So, even if you could, let's say if that's uh, possible. So, you're going to say what? Like, you're going to give minimum what? Like, I mean, you like, you're going to have to... It would be impossible. You would be looking at... The, I think I did it on a calculator where I said, let's say 15 minutes, which is... Eh, no way. Like, that's... But still, if you... And that went into God knows like 16, 17 hours or, or, and 10 minutes. If you if you said something like that, it went into, I think, 15 hours non-stop. This, apart from the ludicrousy of what it's suggesting, that this is a prophet of God 
trying to say, tonight I will have sex with 100 women that will bear me a child, each who will become a warrior. Right? Apart from putting the Prophet of God, Solomon alayhi salam, in such bad light, right? His friend says to him, say inshallah. Now there's only two reasons he didn't say inshallah. Either he forgot or he was too arrogant to say. There's only two reasons. Like I can't be like, okay, I'll change the word arrogant. It can't be bothered. A prophet can't be bothered to say inshallah. Look how you're disrespecting a prophet. Or he forgot. Fine, you can forget. But then because he forgot, God punished him. This is a punishment. So God gave him a handicapped baby. So handicapped babies are a punishment from God to a prophet. So God is punishing his own prophet for not saying inshallah, either because the prophet's too arrogant to say it, or either because the prophet just forgot. And even though he forgot, God still decided to punish him by giving him a handicapped baby. What the hell is that about? What the hell? What, what kind of a picture is that of God? What kind of a picture is that of prophets? What kind of a picture? Why this is the nonsense that we are seeing. This is the kind of nonsense. So we need to really be transparent with ourselves. That look, yes, if a hadith fits in, with with the conditions, with reason, if it fits in with, doesn't clash with the Quran and the general understanding of Islam and it doesn't uproot Islamic principles, we will accept it. If it does, it will go out the window. And this Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari, this is not so Sahih al-Bukhari.